Oh boy, moving the washer. This doesn't look. Yeah, why are we doing that? I don't know. What is going on? Why do you need to move the washer? <laughs> Well guys, this weekend is not where it's at. Uh, boy, we were sure hoping to get some work done outside, but the weather is crazy. And I have to say that and preface it with, the earlier in the week was perfect weather up here. It was the warmest it's been all year, 70 degrees and sunny. I have to admit, I skipped town a few days with a friend. We actually drove down to New Mexico and had a good time, left Brian here. But he, you know, enjoyed getting out for a bike ride and enjoying that warm weather. But, you know, we go to get our work done on the weekends and it's back to freezing temperatures, back to blowing snow. I don't know if you can see it around me, but blowing snow, high, high winds. We're talking 50 mile an hour gusts and you're probably hearing it on this microphone, <laughs> but it's insane right now. Brian was really wanting to get some work done on the shed, but, uh, he seems kind of determined. I'm going to go see. He's over, set up his saw, see what he's up to. It's turning into one of those days where uh, it's going to be focused on working indoors. If you look around, you can see almost all the snow melted over the course of the week. Almost nothing here on the homestead. A little bit out in the woods there, if you can see it. But Brian is working on something. It's freezing out here. It's freezing, yeah. The wind. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm working on a little, just a little shelter, a little box shelter for the the uh, time lapse camera. Okay. We'll put that together real quick. Put a little stain on it, and then uh, put it up. And then I'm extending the forms. Originally, the shed was going to be 12 by 20. Now it's 16 by 20. Well, I had bought 12 foot two by sixes oh. so I needed four extra feet instead of buying 16 footers which are real expensive yeah. I bought a 104 inch footer which was less than the 90 inch 96 inch or uh, 104 inch two by six which was less than the it was two dollars less uh -huh. than a 96 which didn't make any sense to me yeah. but uh, it must be less demand for them I guess I don't know. Anyway, that's what I'm working on. Okay, cool. <laughs> we are expecting a little bit more snow <clears throat> tonight and tomorrow, or tomorrow, maybe a few inches, but again, next week looks like it's going to be a mild and sunny week. So we, whatever snow we do get, I don't expect it to stay around. Whew, I gotta defrost a little bit. That was chilly out there, but I Actually, you guys, I know I've posted this on uh, on the channel where uh, really what I've been up to the last couple weeks is getting all the jewelry ready for my next art show, which is next weekend. Hopefully the forecast is pretty mild down in Boulder. It said 70, 68 degrees, so hopefully it doesn't take a nosedive because this weekend changed on a dime and it got really cold. But I'll show you one thing is this is a new product for me is honeycomb cuffs. So this is a copper cuff, solid copper, right? And then I do the honeycomb pattern above, and then I fuse together the copper layers. And this has been uh, soaked in a sealing, a sealant uh, to preserve the copper color. So I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more, but that's kind of new. If you guys wanna come down to Boulder next weekend, it's on the 29th Street Mall Firefly, Art, artisan craft show and uh, come check it out. All right. Working on the shed isn't the only reason we're hoping for mild weather. I've been dying to get on my brand new bicycle that Brian got me for my birthday a few weeks ago. So I'm going to spin this around and show you guys. So hanging on the wall here is an Orbea gain. Now I like the slick colors, like a mint green and a black combo. And one thing that you can't tell right from looking at it is that, believe it or not, this is an e-bike. It's an electric bike. So it has a motor that you can't quite see. It's kind of buried into the back hub here. 
and you just press a button and it gives you an assist. There's actually three levels of assist and it's super exciting because that means I can keep up with Brian on the hills around here because there's some major hills, major steep climbs, including our road being one of them. So unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to ride the bike hardly at all. I took it out for one spin and that was about three weeks ago and it was still only about 45 degrees and I was fully bundled up. But just the last few weekends, the temperatures haven't cooperated, so I just still haven't had a chance to ride it around. So definitely consider this if you do like riding bikes, but you don't like getting tired out from long bike rides, or you might be matched with someone that's riding with you that you wanna keep up with, definitely consider the e-bike because that's gonna help you not get tired out, and it will help you up the hills, and nobody will know if you get this style because it doesn't look like a big battery. The battery is actually stored right here in the down tube, so it doesn't even look obvious. So the battery's in here, and then you can charge it. The charge is on the floor, and then you've got the button right here. It's very, very sleek and very inconspicuous, so that's the Orbe again. It's got a little bit of dirt on the tires just because I did take it out down the road. <laughs> so, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting more miles on it and going for a long ride with Brian. The only thing that's funny is um, this little bike computer that it came with, it's actually broken. There's a loose wire. When you're, as you're riding the bike, it's supposed to count your miles and how much time and it stays on zero. So there's actually a loose wire. So I need another way to track my mileage and I'm gonna have to use an app for now until I get this fixed. So you can download an app for your bike under your phone and then track your ride that way. But I like to watch my speed as I'm going and you know, it's not convenient when you have your phone because I always have my phone in my pocket. So it would be good to have it displayed here. And so it's a little disappointing to get something brand new and have something be broken on it. But this is kind of strange, but right after I realized this was broken, I heard from a company called Lamacall and they are makers of phone mounts for your bike and they wanted us to test out a couple of phone mounts and i was like this is perfect timing because mine is broken i don't want to just have my phone in my pocket because i can't see how fast i'm going or directions or anything like that so they sent us a couple of bike mounts to test out and because we can't use them outside because of the cold we actually used them on our indoor trainer setup let me show you this so you guys know our workout routine down here, we like to set up our bikes, our exercise bikes in front of the TV. Brian puts on Zwift so he can watch everything and I'll do Peloton, but sometimes we're both side by side and we're sort of fighting over who gets the TV and we're like, where do, you know, where do we put our phones? Like a true problem solver, Brian created his own phone mount from a slab of wood and a, seat cl and a, and, um, a squeeze clamp. So he's got a place to put his phone, although he can't really look at it too well, and some tools apparently. But he's kind of got that laid out here, and then he can plug in to the TV using the cord. So he can plug that in there. But then that leaves me, you know, where do I, where do I put my phone? So let's just show you how this works really quickly. This is model number seven, and it's like, I call it the lobster claw. So the base of it kind of looks like a lobster claw right here. And then there's a button where you can close it really quickly or open it really quickly. So there's that button right there. So you can adjust it to whatever the width of your handlebars is. And then your phone goes in this piece right here and it stretches to accommodate your phone. And then after you snap your phone in to keep it snug, there's actually a little lock on the back. So you can flip the lock over into lock position and it won't, it won't bounce around on you. So that's really handy because you'll be going over some bumps on these roads. But it's really great, and also there's a way to adjust, um, adjust the tilt of, the, of your screen. So if you want it up more or down more, you want it more vertical, you have all the options. You can spin all the way around, 360. <laughs> Just to mount this on your bike, you get it all the way to the open position, go around, and, um, what, what I do like about it is that inside it's rubber, right here is rubber footing, so it really helps grip it a little you know, better than just plastic. So it goes around like that. And once you get it around, you can twist the key on the back to close it up as much as you need to, to get a really snug fit. And there you go. So I would probably have mine tilted 
I would have mine the long way and tilt it if I'm doing like a Peloton class. So super snug like that. And let me put in Brian's phone just to kind of see. All right, and then lock it. You can also tighten on the base there to, to keep that from moving around. You can loosen it up if you want to mess around with your tilt a little bit more. So there is a way to adjust it right here. So you can do that. So I like this one. This one was really convenient for me. It's, um, you know, there's a button and there's no loose pieces. And then Brian tested out the other one on his bike. So this, mo this is the B2 model. And a little bit of a difference is it's set up more like your traditional bike mounts. So here's a traditional bike mount. It usually um, has a hinge and then you, there, once you close it down, you, you turn the screw until it pinches down. It's kind of like a pinch clamp. And so that's, this one is modeled around a similar design. So take it apart for you. It's definitely springy when you open it. So there's a lot more springiness in the, in the design itself. And then it comes with rubber inserts to help again, uh, take up more slack on the handlebar itself. So this has one rubber insert, but it came with three. So you could really make it, um, make the hole as small as you need to. It has the same mounting um, hardware. So it's like a round ball that goes into split screws and then you can tighten that down if you want to. Right now there's a lot of tilt on it, but the more you tighten it, the less it's gonna be uh, tilty. And then uh, the phone goes in similar to the other model. You just you know pull them apart, snap the phone in. On the back side, the lock is a nice red color, so it's easy to find. Once you snap that into place, then there's no more shifting around, so it locks it in. And then for the actual mounting, you'll want to have everything apart and then spread this over the handlebar itself. The other two pieces are a washer and the actual stem bolt, so the stem bolt. And then that goes into the base here. And then you spin it around to tighten it up. Very similar to traditional ways that you put posts into bikes, especially if you're doing your axle post. And then you tighten it by bending it over. So um, can go a little bit more. That way you can get a really, you can get a really precise snug fit. So I'm, I'm really trying here to get a good clamp down. So then once you get it to the tilt that you want, you can further lock this, lock this into place by tightening behind the screen. And then you really have a nice secure phone mount. So for the time being, at least this weekend, this is as much as we've got to try out our new phone mounts on our indoor bikes, but we definitely are excited for that weather to warm up so we can actually take a ride outside and do some, get some miles under our belt, especially with the brand new bike. I am so excited to use it. It's definitely a primo birthday present and uh, gonna put it to use this summer for sure. Aside from riding bikes, there's one more thing that needs our attention. And I think you guys are gonna be a little bit surprised about this. And it's, um, we're definitely learning something, some things the hard way. And this has to do with our foundation. So let me take you over there. Hey, what is your business back here? So, we've got water leaking right there. I remember that from last year. And it comes in pretty quick. And it's usually on days where it, the snow is really melting or it's right. raining on top of the snow melt or yeah. it's raining very heavy, which we don't have a lot of days like that. Usually it snows here uh, yeah. even in the summer. It's, it's hail. So, but when we get a lot of water, it ends up in the basement floor. Yeah. And only there, there's no other spot in the basement that gets water in it. So, yeah. but you can actually see it. It's not like a drip drip. It's like, <sighs> Yeah, comes out pretty good. So, so Brian's suspicion is that there's a there's a there's a void in the foundation. Yeah. So, it's, of course, there's two and two and a quarter inches of styrofoam all over the wall. So, 
And the so, one drawback of ICF is you cannot see your work after right. it's poured. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to use this all, the, all, 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 to uh, probe the foundation and see if I can. So you can hear it. So it goes in that far. So we'll see what we can find. So, uh, most likely it's not, there isn't a void right where the water is coming in. It could be, come, it could be anywhere up there. It's just coming in and then right down. It finds the, the weak spot and leaks right out. So, so right where the water is coming out, it's, there's no void there. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a little iffy right there. I can... Actually, actually looks like that styrofoam's. This is there's a joint in this piece of styrofoam. That's plastic in there. That's the that one's a little iffy there. So your strategy is to detect the void right. with your poking. Yeah, and then and then uh, then I'm gonna have to strip the styrofoam off. Yeah. So I try to find the the highest point where the void is, and then I can cut a little piece of foam out and see what I see, and then maybe vibrate some cement down in there or hmm. some kind of a. Oh, there we go. <laughs> well, that's yeah. So there's a void right there. Not there, it's just above it. Wouldn't the void have to go all the way through to the other side? Yeah. Okay. It would. But the water could be coming in through the styrofoam up here, leaking down, and then coming in through a void, and then coming down the styrofoam on this side. So you know, it could be. Oh, Anywhere really, but I mean, it's got to be a. I mean, that's a pretty significant hole right there. Yeah. But so this water would have to be then working its way over to that hole there. If that's where it's coming in. Mm -hmm. You can always take a sharpie and draw it. I think I'm just going to cut this out mm -hmm. and look and see what we got. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to do it. But how do you get? cement back in there without it leaking back out. That'd be something thick, thin that sets up quick that would will fill all the little nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. And if we use an epoxy, they have a crack filling epoxy, of course. <clears throat> we can make a dam on the outside and then fill it up. But if the a long enough nozzle, we could, if the hole is big enough, we can squirt it right in there. Oh. Anyway, what I need is a knife and just start cutting this out because that's that's right there and there. There's the plastic piece there. Mm -hmm. Hmm, looks like dirt. Looks like mud. Yeah. Let me uh, get more of this out. That's what ties the, the panels together. Yep, so I think I'll have to get a cold chisel, bust this out, cut this back more. Mm -hmm. Maybe there. And 
that we can get a game plan together. I think filling it with some something that's like an epoxy that's more fluid mm -hmm. is a better idea. Yeah. Well, I see you dug out a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna dig more out too. I'm probably gonna go at least up to here, down to the top of the two by fours, and then make a big, just to see what else is there. Mm -hmm. I need to drill. This one kind of goes up a little bit. I'll probably drill a hole on an angle. Yep. Diagonal down, uh, and that one as well. So I have a high spot. So as I'm pumping, I'm putting the material in, mm -hmm. the air will come out. Oh, okay. So you won't get stuck in there. Have you decided on the material? Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I bought a uh, quickcrete structural polymer. Okay. So I'm gonna use that. That's what it's for? Yes. Mm -hmm. For fixing holes and stuff. Okay. <laughs> That'll have to be another it, video <laughs> to yes. fix that. So it, it needs to be something that's gonna flow fairly well. I mm -hmm. uh, can still try and vibrate it with a you know, put a piece of rebar in there somehow, and I, I use a little sander that vibrates the mm -hmm. rebar. Help get some air out, get it to flow into all the little cracks and nooks and crannies and stuff yeah. like that. So, so would you recommend ICF after this problem? Oh yeah, yes. I don't think it's the necessarily the ICF problem. I think it's more of a the slump rate the flow rate of the concrete that was going in okay so the concrete yeah. contractor kind of did us a fail a yeah bit. i think so all right and then you just have to be diligent about vibrating it around mm -hmm. so i think there's probably a you know we had that big long vibrator thing was very heavy mm -hmm. um but even if there was something you could stick on top of the rebar, because there's rebar throughout the whole thing you could vibrate the rebar mm -hmm. a little bit that would help yeah. Do the same thing. So if there's a machine, okay. you can kind of just set on the rebar and. Right. I think that'd be easier. Yeah. That... Okay. Well, cool. So that'll be another video. And then yeah. um, I was showing everybody the bike mount. So I think you got to test it out yourself yeah. a little bit. Yeah. So it's pretty good. The yeah. uh, it's nice to have, uh, especially when I'm on the the trainer inside. It locks it in place so that I can mm -hmm. um, use the controls. Yeah. So easier. Yeah, you need to have access to your phone. Right. So. All right. Well, hopefully uh, warmer weather next weekend. Hopefully. <laughs> Although I won't be around. I'll be at my art show. Oh, so. yeah. All right, guys. We'll see you next time. Sure. Bye.